Hello, 3D printing friends. It's time once again for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BV3D channel. And it's socket to me time. What in the world am I talking about? Stick around and find out. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hey there, thanks for sticking around. So it's socket to me time. Socket to me, honey! No, not the old Rowan and Martin laugh in bit. Sock it to me? <laughs> no, I said no. Ugh. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Replacing the ceramic fiber insulating pad on the heater block with one of these. A silicone sock. I bought a three pack of these from Amazon for about 11 bucks, so I guess that makes them about four bucks a piece. There's a link to them down in the description. The Kapton tape and ceramic fiber pad on the heater block of my Maker Select Plus was starting to look a little ratty. I had replaced it once before and it was a bit of a pain to get the hole cut at just the right place and the pad and then having to do a neat job with the Kapton tape and then when I did it last time a little bit of that ceramic fluff got down in the nozzle and filament started to get jammed in there and I had to take the whole hot end apart to get it cleaned out again and I did not want to go through that again. So that brings us to this, the silicone sock. Installing it basically involves removing the existing Kapton tape and ceramic pad stuff and putting this on in its place. Now, you might be able to get away with just cutting the Kapton tape and pulling the ceramic pad off, but I wanted to make sure that the heater block was clean, or clean-ish, before I installed the silicone sock. And that means taking the extruder apart, but it's really not that big of a deal. If you want an overview, it's this. Disassemble the extruder and remove the heater block. Remove the old ceramic insulating pad, clean the heater block if it's yucky, add the silicone sock, and reassemble the extruder. So having gone over that, let's go over to the printer and we'll run through the process. Unscrew the two screws that are holding the fan and the heat sink to the extruder stepper motor. But don't pull them all the way out. Leave them sitting there. They are actually serving a purpose at the moment. So with those screws loosened, hold on to the stepper motor and then remove the fan and the heat sink. The screws will keep the spacers in place between the fan and the heat sink. And now we can take the heat sink off and we'll set that aside. Then remove the spacers and set those aside. And now we can remove the screws, set them aside and tuck the fan out of the way. Now we can remove the stepper motor. I'm leaving a little piece of filament in there to act as a guide to make sure the filament path is aligned when we put the extruder together again. So lift the stepper motor up, unplug it, and set it aside. Now remove the part cooling fan. I have the Cobra cooler installed here, so it's mounted around the back of the X carriage. If you still have the stock part cooling fan, it's on the front and it's in the way. So let's remove it and set it aside. Now it occurred to me that I needed more working room to get my driver under the carriage to remove the heater block, so I had to raise the z-axis a bit to get more space. But now that there's room to work, remove the two screws holding the heater block in place. Now I chose to unplug the heater and the thermistor from the breakout board on the back of the X carriage so that I could work on the heater block a little easier. If you want to do this too, remove the metal cover from the back of the X carriage then unplug the heater and thermistor. Make note of where the connectors go so that you can plug them back into the correct place when you're putting all this back together. Now that we have those cables unplugged, we can work on the heater block. Okay, here we have the heater block, tube, and cooling block all together as one assembly. So what we're going to be doing is removing this Kapton tape and the fluffy ceramic wool pad that it's holding in place. To make this easier, I'm going to remove the cooling block by releasing the set screw that keeps the cooling block attached to the tube. Just loosen it a little bit and then remove the cooling block from the tube. Now, this is the Micro Swiss all metal hot end with the slotted cooling block, but the procedure is essentially the same for the stock hot end. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut across the Kapton tape and the ceramic wool insulating pad. And then the pad can be peeled away from the heater block. You may need to use a flat blade screwdriver to assist in removing the pad. 
For the most part, it should come off easily, but be sure to remove any residual ceramic fluff. I still had a little bit around this washer, but the blade screwdriver and a pair of tweezers took care of that pretty easily. Now let's clean up real quick. Okay, with the capped on tape and the ceramic pad out of the way, we can get a better look at the heater block. Now this doesn't look too bad. There are a few bits of plastic here and there, so we'll get those cleaned off to our liking. And now it's socket to me time. So let's pull a silicone sock out of the bag. It's nice and squishy. This fits easily over the heater block and it just presses on. And that's really all there is to it. Well, now we need to reassemble the extruder. So let's get to it. So reassembly is basically the exact opposite of disassembly. Now, I already put the cooling block on the tube, so we're gonna go ahead and get this assembly bolted onto the carriage. After that, plug the stepper motor back in and get it in place. Then put the screws through the fan, put the spacers on the screws and then the heat sink and get those bolted to the extruder stepper. With that tightened down, reattach the thermistor and heater cables and then put the cover back on the breakout board on the back of the X carriage. Finally, reattach your parts cooling fan. And that's it. Okay, now that we have the extruder back together, let's run a PID tune since we changed the insulation on the heater block. It may not really be required, but it only takes a few minutes and there's no harm in doing it. Now that that's done, it's also probably a good idea to level the bed too, since we were messing around with the extruder. I'll leave the leveling up to you. You've probably done it a bunch of times already. If by chance you want me to do a bed leveling video, leave a comment and let me know. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? As mods go, this one was pretty easy. We didn't have to print any parts, although that's often part of the fun, and we only had to deal with a couple of screws. Okay, so we're nearing the end, and this is where I say things like like, subscribe, and share, because those things really do help the channel. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel with a one-time micropayment, you could buy me a coffee or drop a little something in the PayPal tip jar. There are links for that down in the description. If you're new here or you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking the BB3D icon right over here and ring the bell to be notified when I release new videos. Speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Well, that's all the time we have for now. I'm going to go print something cool. You print something cool, too. See you next time.